Soho Properties is a Manhattan-based, privately held real estate development and investment firm founded in 2003 by Sharif Al Gamal, and the properties do include the Margaritaville Hotel in Times Square, as well as residential apartments. And uh, with me to tell me more about Soho Properties is Sharif Al Gamal. Great to have you here. Good morning. Very, very excited to yeah. be here with so you. So let's talk about just the, your business in general, property development. Um, you've had billions of transactions. So explain to me how the how the industry looks to you right now. I think we are right now uh, at, at an inflection point in the real estate markets globally, and uh, we, we've obviously leapfrogged into the future uh, with uh, with the advent of, of COVID and 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 right now with inflation and 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 interest rates, and so we're really at an inflection point where. Uh, from our perspective at Soho Properties, uh, we think this is one of the uh, most important times in history uh, to really start looking very closely at hard assets mm. and real estate. Interesting. Um, and I mentioned you were founded in 2003, so you've lived through financial crisis, um, COVID, which must have had a huge impact. How did yes. you navigate all of that? Uh, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> Boy, you know, what, what, <laughs> what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I think uh, uh, we, 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 were, we were young children during uh, the global financial crisis in, in, in 2008. And I think we, uh, uh, we got many, uh, uh, many big wounds in, in our vessels and, and in our projects, and, and we survived that. Uh, COVID obviously was completely unexpected, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, we, we, we built Margaritaville during COVID, mm -hmm. uh, so we were able to uh, figure out how to game the system in New York City when, when everybody else was stopped and sitting at home. Uh, I got infected with, with COVID really when it first came out. Okay. I just come back from skiing in Vail. Mm. And uh, after I, you know, I got it out of my system, thank God, I was you know, one of the lucky ones. Mm. Uh, I just came back to the office. I think I was the only person in my office on my block. <laughs> I got my general counsel, I convinced him to come back. Uh, and. Uh, and within about a week, uh, you know, the last week of March of 2020, uh, we, we, we reactivated our site in Times Square. Mm. And we brought several hundred people back to build uh, the Margaritaville Resort. So we built it during COVID. Wow. Uh, and then we had the good fortune and success of also, uh, uh, you know, we work with equity and with debt in our projects, and we had a, we had a facility, a, a large debt facility that was maturing, mm. and uh, uh, literally every single broker had come to us and said, "You're going to need to figure out a way to restructure the debt yeah. with the existing lenders, or you're going to lose your asset." Mm. And uh, my comeback was, you know, there is no restructuring the debt if we don't figure out how to. Uh, how to pay them back, we're going to end up losing the assets. So we put on our, uh, you know, thinking caps and, and we ended up uh, last year closing uh, the largest hospitality financing in New York City. We put together about $320 million, uh, you know, right during COVID. So I think, uh, 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 you know, the Rockefellers built Rockefeller Center during uh, a certain Depression. era in New right, York in yeah. the Depression. <laughs> uh, Soho Properties built Margaritaville uh, uh, and refinanced it during COVID. What kind of like takeaways would you have? Like, if you were speaking to a group of students about how to navigate the unexpected in business, I mean, what were some big lessons that you learned during that time? You know, the, the greatest thing and, and the most important thing that I say to everybody is that the will of men has the power to shape destinies and, uh, and manifest the future. Uh, and, and that was really, uh, that was really uh, you know, the first thing is that you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in yourself and you have to believe in what you're doing. And I think that once you get through uh, once you get through the shock and the panic and, and all the other things that come with great tests and you just, you know, roll up your sleeves and get back into the trenches and, and, and work hard and work smart, 
uh, magic happens. Yeah, you figure and it out somehow. You, you do. Right? Uh, if you have the right intention, if you're working with the right people, uh, which we're very blessed to have just incredible people, seasoned people that we've, we've been through many markets together, we've been through many challenges together, uh, uh, and, and, and uh, you, you figure out, and, and we specialize in complex situations. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, New York City is really shark infested waters when it, <laughs> when it comes to the real estate markets. Yes. It's one of the most competitive uh, and, and sought after marketplace in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, you, you just do it. Uh, yeah. You know, you just do it and believe in yourself and believe in your team. Yeah. How would you say the New York City real estate market is right now? There's a lot of uncertainty uh, and there's a lot of fear uh, and there's a lot of unknowns. And, uh, and that's when you should, as an investor, really look how to get into that market. Uh, you know, we were very blessed in 2009 uh, that we were able to uh, put about almost $100 million into the market uh, in 2009, obviously when everybody was afraid of their shadow. Yeah. Uh, I feel that this is going to be one of the greatest buying events of our history hmm. uh, in the real estate markets, particularly in New York City right now, um, with all that uncertainty that yeah. exists amongst us. Now, inflation, has that impacted you? Or what about like wage inflation and hiring people? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the markets are extremely competitive. Uh, but I think even before inflation, uh, unfortunately, this generation, uh, you know, the, the is gotten, uh, I don't want to use the word lazy, uh, <laughs> but um, I think they, they, have they, I, they, have, they have a different work ethic. They want to work from home. Um, I think they needed a recession to wake them up. Mm. I think that a recession was, was, was imp you know, the recession that we're having is important because it's really going to smack some of these kids mm. and let them realize that they can't work from home, that, that, that you know, the, 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 the human interactions that we're having, mm. you can't do that over a phone call or over a Zoom meeting or, or over a Google Meet meeting. It's, you know, there's no substitute for that. Uh, it's challenging. I mean, it's just very challenging with the new mindset of the new generation. And I think that, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the inflationary period that we're in also right now has just, you know, further, it's like the perfect storm. Mm -hmm. It's like we're in, we're, we, there's a storm that we're in the middle of yeah. and we just don't understand. There's a lot of new things mm -hmm. that, we are, that we are all experiencing in all markets right now that are kind of interconnected. Yeah, no, it definitely feels like there's some tectonic changes going on. I just don't know how it's all gonna play out. Right. But <laughs> Sharif, thank you so much. Some thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for having me. Margaritaville's a great hotel, so thank, thank you. you. Thank uh -huh. you.